everyone, and welcome to The Crows Show, brought to you by Foodland. I'm Mark Pickley. And I'm Alana Smith. As we count down to the business end of the AFL season, players and coaches strive to make every week a winner. Coming up in today's show, one Kelly to another. Valuable lessons on the road to a football future. And the big change looming for draft night. A test of nerves for players and clubs alike. But first, for Crows fans, football at Adelaide Oval is as much a sensory experience as it is a sporting spectacle. The game obviously occupies centre stage, but it's complemented by a continuous audio-visual display as well as fireworks, giving the crowd a complete entertainment package. The whole show is a joint production between the club and Kojo Marketing. Well, I work for a company that called Kojo that basically look after all of the screens and the LED ribbons, uh, the lighting, the audio, all of all of that, all of the show that basically is put on for a game day, particularly focusing on the pre-match, but we also do all the in-game coverage, replays, all of that kind of thing. We want to bring the fans the best experience, most engaging experience we possibly can. I think people will be surprised at the size of our crew. It's up to 20 people, usually, depending on... It'll be 15 to 20, depending on the scale of the event. So we have camera operators. We have three camera operators with vision switches, video replay people, graphics operators. It's a smaller scale, but that's the kind of level that it's at. And we've got two great MCs that we work with, with the Crows. Throughout the week, we'll work with the, the Crows event team to actually work out what we'll be doing with them on the day. It's about making their experiences pretty enjoyable. Obviously, they come to watch the footy, but if we can help by showing them where the kid zone is or maybe showing them where Claude is and, and just enhancing the overall experience outside of the footy. That's sort of where our job comes in. But of course, you know, as soon as the boys run out under the ground and everyone wants to see a few goals and of course the guys get over the line. So our role just diminishes a little bit, but we get to see it from, as I said, a very unique point of view. Match day, we really kind of work to build that atmosphere right up to the bounce, to the start of the game. Um, you know, and key moments like team entries, all of that kind of thing, make for a really special experience for the fans. We try to integrate all of the lighting, the audio, great music, LEDs, everything to make an experience that really immerses the fans here, especially with the lighting, with, it, with a night game like tonight. Yeah, it's a pretty special experience. <laughs> the game day experience has certainly come a long way since I played. Now. Let's look at how brotherly advice is helping to advance the career of one of the brightest prospects in this year's national draft. Crows defender Jake Kelly has been in regular contact with his younger brother Will in Melbourne in the faint hope he might join him in Adelaide. In this chat, brought to you by Revolution Roofing, Jake also touches on his own career, eyeing a move away from defence. Recent under-18 national championships were another opportunity for Will Kelly to showcase his potential. He now stands on the threshold of an AFL career, a journey his brother Jake began five years ago. So I've actually been ringing him most weeks and explaining to him like what what you go through and um, what, what what are you feeling and. Um, it's been great. I've really enjoyed actually playing that sort of role and telling him how, how, how I felt at that time and um, seeing what he thinks and it's been really special for me. Jake and Will are sons of former Collingwood Premiership player Craig Kelly. The Magpies overlooked Jake as a father-son draft pick but almost certainly won't pass on Will. He's a bit taller than me, he's about 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six, plays forward and back so uh, hopefully he strings a few good games together in the second half of the year and he can uh, yeah, put his hand up to be drafted. Um, um, I don't think Collingwood will let him go though, so he might not end up here, but fingers crossed. Oh, that is a wonderful mark for Kelly. After seven years playing as a defender, Jake is keen to move up the field, something the Crows tried against the Eagles. Well, I've been an autopilot at times um, over the last two years because I've played back so often, you sort of just automatically know where to set up, where you've got to position yourself. So I think suddenly going into a new position like the wing, you suddenly have to start thinking about it more and um, it, it's a good challenge. On the wing, Jake can also exploit his exceptional endurance ability, last year winning the two kilometre time trial. I think you've got to embrace going to a new position. If they want you to play there, you've got to just 
go, yep, sweet, let's do it. Um, learn as much as you can. I've been watching vision of guys like Paul Seedsman, who played the position really well and this year he's having an amazing year, so I can learn off guys like that. When the Kelly family watches this year's draft, they'll almost certainly see a dramatic change in the way the event is conducted. The AFL is likely to follow the lead of major American sports and introduce live pick trading. It will certainly make the night more complicated for list managers and recruiters like the Crows, Hamish Ogilvie. Uh, the recruiters may not be at the location where the draft is. It, it could be like that. Um, we could also have trading up until the draft, so that adds a different aspect to it. Um, I would anticipate maybe more live trading of picks in the early rounds of the draft. That'll go over the first night and then this looks like the second two rounds of the rookie draft will be on the next day. I think it'll be this year. We'll certainly, I think we'll trade on the night. We haven't got the go from the AFL yet um, and we don't know exactly how it's going to look but um, we're pretty sure in some fashion it'll be in this year. So Mark, we've heard from Hamish there. How do you see it working? Well, it's certainly going to make it for an exciting night. Um, I guess basically the difference will be is no matter where your team's picks lie, there is a chance. Let's take the Crows, for example. They could bundle up a number of picks and on-trade them to one of the clubs that have, let's say, the top three picks to get that player they really want. So uh, you might tune in knowing your team has a pick higher up, but they could bundle them together and you could potentially get to the pointy end and get one of the very best players. Yeah, exciting prospects. So you're in favour of the concept? Yeah, look, I think it's going to be fun. Um, it will elongate the night a little bit, but um, in terms of, we know who the top four or five players are, particularly this year with some South Australian talent right at the pointy end. Uh, I think every uh, Crows fan in particular will be hoping that somehow uh, Adelaide can do a deal and maybe get exposed to that talent. Well, what about a downside? Can you see one? Well, I think the only thing is it'll be quite complicated so people tuning in for the first time may be scratching their head saying how does all this work of course uh, you've got trading of future picks for example but um, any other thing I would say is it may take a little bit longer than what we're used to if uh, they're allowing five or six minutes each pick for the trading of picks it could be quite a long night. Yeah, it sounds like there could be a fair bit of theatre around it and it could really turn into quite a big event. Well, if you look at the US as a lead, it, most certainly it is an event there. They they sell tickets to, to actually go along and watch it live and then it plays out around the country. I've seen footage of bars, particularly in the, the club that has the number one pick and they all explode when they, they get the player they want. So I think over time, certainly it'll become more of an event. Yeah, look forward to seeing how it plays out. Thanks, Mark. Of course, it will definitely add to the nerves of young men on the night. Well, do stay with us on The Crow Show. After the break, we show why Graham Johncock was a crowd favourite for more than 200 games. Now, in a year when injuries have severely tested the club's depth, the absence of Brody Smith has been significant. But he hasn't been missing from the Crow Show, where we've kept him busy grilling young fans, all thanks to Thomas Farms. Welcome to Thomas Farm Junior Jams. This week we're joined by Charlie. Charlie, how old are you? Um, I'm nine. Do you play football? Um, yes, I do. I play for the Unley Jets. The Unley Jets. And who's your favourite player? Um, Paul Seedsman. Paul Seedsman? Yeah. That's a new one. Haven't had that one yet. What do you like about Paul? Um, that he's really fast and he kicks goals from outside 50. So you like me as well then? Or? Yeah. Yeah, I could, yeah. <laughs> if you could have any job, what would it be? An ice cream server. An ice cream, so you can help yourself as well? Yeah. Yeah, smart. What's the naughtiest thing you've done? Don't get yourself in trouble. Um, hit my brother and sister. You hit them? Yeah. What did you hit them for? I, I can't remember. Were they being mean? <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> if you are a millionaire, what would you buy? Heaps of footy cards and <laughs> AFL training equipment. AFL training equipment? Yeah. That's good, so you can come join the Crows? Yeah. Yeah, nice. And if you did join the Crows this week, what position would you like to play? Mid midfield. In the midfield. So who, who are you going to take out of the midfield so you can play? Atkins. Atkins. <laughs> you didn't even think about it. Cop that, right? <laughs> thanks for joining us, mate. Yep, thanks, buddy. <laughs> Good work. <laughs> 
And if you want to join up as a junior member, it's not too late to head to 19thman.com.au. Of all the players who've worn the Crows colours, only 15 have notched up 200 games or more. One of them is Graham Johncock, who started as a small forward but later became a resolute and reliable defender, delighting fans with some great grabs. In this High Flyers segment, brought to you by Flight Centre, Graham relives a classic moment against Essendon. Fletcher goes long, John Cole! I have seen it a few times on YouTube, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> yeah, obviously being a defender, um, you know, I, I, one of my strengths was really being able to read the play when the uh, ball was transitioning down the ground and um, I remember Dustin Fletcher, you know, he had that big long raking kick on him and um, I just happened to read the play and came up, come off my man and I went up and stuck the knee out and got a little bit of extra push off the opponent and lucky enough I didn't actually grab it fully on the first grab but um, you know it actually fell in my lap so I was pretty lucky I guess to actually get, get the mark. Blindy loved it. Himself. Everybody looks at uh, Modra and the Birdman, and you know, I played with Bird, and um, you know he was just a freak of it, and he did it every second week. Oh! Nobody in the history of the club could ever match that besides Mod, so you know, pretty unique talent those two have. Douglas, little kick to John Bob. game today is a, is a lot more congested. Um, a lot of teams get an old numbers back which makes it hard for forwards to actually get a bit of space to run out and jump at the ball and um, there is also a lot of shepherding, you know, defenders holding holding their play uh, forwards down and allowing their third man in. So as a forward's point of view, I wouldn't want to be forward playing these days. Graham called time on his AFL career in 2013, but at the age of 35, he still plays for his old club, Mallee Park, in Port Lincoln. For him and all other Crows players, there's nothing better than belting this out. We're the pride of South Australia. Shortly, the story behind the song. Welcome back. As a member of the Crows inaugural squad, I can still remember singing the club song for the first time back in 1991 with all my teammates. It's a song that unites fans across the country and spurs players to celebrate each and every win. We all have one man to thank for the tune and the lyrics and that is of course the club's first CEO, the great Bill Sanders. We're the pride of South Australia. The club song was very low on the priority but the board, I said look, put it to them we were going to need to do something so it gave me the responsibility I, I thought we needed a strong music bed strong background so the Marines hymn by Offenbach was the one that struck me it was in public domain so I wrote to the US Marines uh, in Washington their headquarters general someone and got their approval we then needed to pens of words so one day in the boardroom I just I don't know, just playing around with words and up Bob this, with pride of South Australia. I, I went to the police band and I said, look, we'd like to do, do this and gave them the music bed. And, and we went to Channel 7 Studios, got the TV people in to do it all and, and got half a dozen players that looked like they were singing it. <laughs> look at this, uh, Rashido, Tony Hall, Bickley, they can't sing for nuts. <laughs> So they looked like they were. <laughs> the AFL recorded an updated version of the Crows song to launch the 2018 season, but the club rejected it. Now, if you've been following our new Crows show Twitter page, you'd be aware that we were giving away a signed Guernsey. Well, we can reveal on the show today that Annika Ranchard is the lucky winner. So congratulations, Annika, and thank you to all those who entered. Remember to follow us at The Crows Show to keep up with the show and look out for more competitions in the near future.
The importance of physical exercise in maintaining a healthy mind has long been recognised, but the concept is now supported by scientific proof. In this segment, Amy Nielsen from the Breakthrough Mental Health Research Foundation talks about the evidence and introduces us to an app they've created to help people achieve the ideal lifestyle. So as we know, there is a link between physical activity and physical health. So physical activity helps prevent against diseases like cardiovascular disease, dementia and stroke. But a lot of research recently has shown that there is a positive link between physical activity levels and mental health. So the app we've created together with the Breakthrough Foundation um, is designed to help detect uh, mental health symptoms in real time. So what it does is that it uses a mobile phone's data, so it looks at the GPS location, the pedometer streams, the motion sensors, and it uses all of that information along with a person's entries about the, how they feel, how they slept, to then go and determine um, the early warning signs of mental health. It kind of helps a person to reflect on their own behaviours and their own thoughts and then they can make changes from that. There are more than 800 players on AFL lists, so who would you choose as the complete footballer with the best combination of skills? It's a question we'll explore after the break. every week how much the game has changed in recent years and to succeed at the highest level the modern player has to be multi-dimensional. In this segment Toyota Hybrid Heroes, Crows players describe the ultimate hybrid player and identify the skills and attributes they'd like to add to their game. Today we hear from Kyle Cheney. And you know what? He's doing it. He's kicked two first half goals. He should have had three. For me, the ultimate hybrid player would probably be Harry Taylor. Um, I guess his ability to shut down the most dangerous forwards in the game and then if the game needs it, he can go forward and, and pinch hit and you know kick a few goals as well. So he's dangerous at both ends. Dangerfield's pickup was sensational. An attribute that I'd like to steal to add to my game is from Paddy Dangerfield. Um, his speed and explosiveness. Um, yeah, his, his ability to get off his player and um, push off and lead at the ball uh, with extreme speed and leave us defenders behind him is um, something that I'd love to add. Oh, Cheney! They are playing inspired football! Now let's find out what the fans think. Who would they choose as the complete footballer? I'll have to say Rory Sloan after today. Could be Buddy for his size and athleticism. Uh, could be like Talia, maybe Rats. Eddie, you can't go past him, he's pretty reliable. Probably got to say Dusty Martin, I suppose, yeah. Let's stay with the fans and look for our crow in the crowd. Looking, looking, why don't we settle on you? If you recognise yourself, contact the club by 5pm on Wednesday. Be ready to show some photo ID and you'll receive a merchandise pack from Toyota. That just about wraps up our show brought to you by Foodland. Next week we'll look back on Brodie Smith's courageous comeback from that terrible knee injury. A story of pain and perseverance. Don't forget, for all the latest club news and player profiles, go to the Crows website, afc.com.au, as well as Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Thanks for your company today and we look forward to joining you again next Sunday. At 11.30 on 7, we'll see you then. Bye for now.